if you think about this being a vector where the tip good morning fellow physicists we are doing physics for once on this channel again there's going to be more in the near future i promise we are going to do something nice and snacky today little snack we are going to derive the equations of motion for a simple pendulum using Lagrangian mechanics that's quite cool Lagrangian mechanics are cool if you don't know shit about well <laughs> physics then it's really no problem because you just have to understand the math namely that this right here is the potential energy that's the kinetic energy this is the Lagrangian being just the difference of those two and also we have this Euler Lagrange equation I'm going to go into more detail while talking in this video at first it would be nice to construct ourselves an R vector to solve for our kinetic energy because this right here is going to give us enough information to construct our potential energy let's go ahead and get started so what exactly is the R vector? the R vector tells us where our mass in the system or our masses are going to be all the time so it's really easy to construct if we just think about this string right here which is going to stay constant over time so this L, this length of the string is going to stay constant all the time if you think about this being a vector where the tip just the tip once again <laughs> we are doing a lot of vectors here on this um, advent calendar is just our mass okay how can we find out the position of this mass all the time where well, we can just use Papa Pythagoras actually if we construct us a right triangle where we have a set coordinate for example and an x coordinate a set and an x length and well our r vector is just going to consist of some x and set coordinate what are they exactly well if you take a look the sine of phi is nothing but x over l and the cosine of phi is nothing but z over l and we can solve respectively for x and z in the process polar coordinates i've talked about this before a lot of times so we are going to end up with well at first we have l times the sine of phi and we have l times the cosine of phi and i want you guys to notice something really crucial because we have to differentiate with respect to time in the next step our phi right here is time dependent because the angle which is enclosed by our x-axis and the string is going to change over time all the time so we are going to have some kind of angular velocity in the end so um, yeah with that out of the way we have to use the chen lu in the process because we have sine of phi of t so our sine is also time dependent explicitly so what happens if we differentiate our r vector well we are just going to do this point wise component wise meaning we have our constant length being just a constant namely l and l this is going to stay sine of phi differentiated the outer derivative is just well cosine of phi now we have to take the inner derivative which is phi of t differentiated with respect to t which is just phi dot of t you could say i'm going to leave this t out of the way same spiel down here cosine differentiated is just a sine but negative sine in this case negative sine of phi times phi dot and et voila we have constructed ourselves this r dot vector but we have to square it now how can you imagine a vector being squared well if we take this vector for example down here and we square it this is the same as transponing this first vector x and z and multiplying it with x and z you can imagine this like matrix multiplication taking this vector putting it up here multiplying common and vice and adding those multiplications together so in the end we would have x squared plus z squared let's go ahead and do this with this r dot vector that means our t is nothing but m over 2 this thing squared which is corresponding to l squared phi dot squared cosine squared of phi I'm leaving this phi out of the way plus because negative sine is going to cancel out negative and negative l squared phi dot squared sine squared and you can see we can factor out this l squared and phi dot squared so this is m over 2 l squared phi dot squared times cosine squared plus sine squared and this right here is just one by the fundamental theorem of trigonometry this is our kinetic energy already done really easy now for the potential energy you see our potential energy is going to 
tell us something about the potential <laughs> where this mass is lying in. Well, what is our set right here? Well, this is basically just the height where our mass is all the time. Well, but our coordinate system starts up here, so it's hanging in the negative height. You can say it's hanging under the point where it, well, is fixed up here. So we have to take negative the set coordinate. Just think about it. It's like we have placed this pendulum underground. <laughs> so our u is now nothing but m times gravitation acceleration times negative the set coordinate. So we have negative m times g times l times the cosine of phi. And there we go with this out of the way. We can actually construct our Lagrangian, which is nothing but the difference of this and this right here. This is nothing but m over 2, l squared phi dot squared, and then we have negative and negative going to become positive. So positive m times g times l times the cosine of phi. Hey, coolio! That's our Lagrangian. And in order for us to get our equations of motion for this pendulum, we have to use the Euler-Lagrange equation. The only thing you really have to know is what our Qs are. So those are the restraints. And what are they exactly where you can say those are just the components in the system we are go which are going to change over time. And well, the only thing which is really changing over time in our system is this phi right here. So at first we are going to take the time derivative of the partial derivative with, with respect to our phi dot right here of our Lagrangian. It sounds quite complicated, but it's really easy. But with bigger system, it's going to get arbitrarily hard to differentiate and it's going to be really annoying. So we have d dt of del phi dot l. And in the system, you can have many, many, many restraints de depending many angles, for example. That's why we have this qi right here. So you have to use the Euler-Lagrange e equation on all the restraints you have in your system. So this right here is now nothing but d dt of del phi dot l. The second part is independent of phi dot. It, it doesn't matter, it's just dependent on phi. So we are differentiating this right here, so tracking the two down, so we have m times l squared times phi dot. And well, this differentiated with respect to time, those are constants, and this is going to result in the angular acceleration, you could say, phi double dot. So we have m times l squared times phi double dot. It's as easy as it is. Second derivative with respect to time of this angle right here. And the last thing to do is to differentiate this Lagrangian right here with respect to just phi. This first part is just dependent on phi dot, so that's just constant basically. And well, if we differentiate this with respect to phi, it's just going to be the negative sign of phi. So it's really easy. So we have m times g, negative sign, sine of phi. And we also had our l right here. Yeah. I don't want to forget the L. And now you can see we can cancel stuff out. So this M is going to cancel out. We can just add this whole term on both sides. We can cancel out the L's right here. So we are going to end up with zero being nothing but phi double dot. That's an ugly looking phi. Positive, well, G. And we have this L right here. But we can also divide both sides by L because our length is not equal to zero. So dividing this by L and this by L. So we have G over L times, well, the sine of phi. And there we go. This is basically it. And solving this right here is going to result in an absolute mess if you try it for yourself. Solving this differential equation because you're going to end up with some elliptic integral which you just can solve without numerical methods. What you should do instead is suppose that your angle phi is really small. Meaning if phi is small, <laughs> let's put it that way, we have zero times, well, phi double dot plus g over l times phi, and this is really easy to solve using a simple ansatz. And then we are done. I hope you did enjoy this a bit longer video this time on Power Flames Advent Calendar. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. I like to sing because it's... Uh, no, I really can sing. I suck balls when it comes to singing. But you can support the channel in many different ways. Don't forget to activate your bell button and everything else. Share those videos and up until... Ne uh, 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 I'm losing my speech skills. Up until the next video, however, um, can I find something? Oh, it's so stupid here. I can't find any. Ugh. Have a physics journal day once again. Uh, it's so dusty. Can you see it? Blech. Ciao.